All right, so let's talk about the division algorithm, how we do a division. The first thing I want to note, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but there's one more algorithm that the book talks about called partial quotients. And partial quotients, um, they're not particularly important, but it's doing kind of the long division that we know um, ourselves. It's doing it in an unoptimal way, in a way that isn't particularly optimal. I don't want to spend too much time on it. There is a question here or there that you might see that um, uses partial quotients, but if that's the case, um, it's a good idea to just see if you can read that section in chapter 3.4. Just look for partial quotients and see if you can figure it out using an example or um, the explanation there. It's not particularly important though. So our standard or what's usually called long division algorithm is basically what we're doing is a very similar idea of how we do multiplication or even um, addition and subtraction. We're using the idea of place value intelligently. So what we're doing is we're going to separate our number in some sense into its separate place values and ask how many groups we can make just from that place value and the remainders. They'll get ungrouped to the next place value down. So let me do a quick example here. So let's say if we want to do something along the lines of 431 divided by 3. This is a good example. Well, let's do long division over to the side, and I'm just going to talk about what each step means. So, of course, we put our divisor on the outside and our dividend under the division symbol. Well, 3 goes into 4 once. 1 times 3 is 3. We subtract. We get 1. 1 is smaller than 3. That's a, Then we made a good choice up there. Bring down our next digit, which is a 3. 3 goes into 13. 4 times. We subtract. 4 times 3 is 12. Bring down your next 1. We get a remainder of 1, of course. And 3 goes into 11. 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract. We get two, and unless we want to get into decimals, which at this point we don't, or decimals, sorry, we'll just say we have a remainder of two left over. So let's draw this out with blocks. What's going on here? So we have 431, so I'm going to draw it like this. We have four squares. We have three long pieces. Maybe I'll do the long pieces in a different color, actually. Three long pieces and one one. And we want to divide these into groups of three. So, okay, how do we do this? Well, let's start just with our hundreds. So when we do this um, three into four bit, what we're actually saying is, how many groups of three can we make from four hundreds without regrouping, just with the hundreds as themselves? And you can see we have four of these guys. We can make one group of three. So I'm going to do that. Here is my one group. And that group, that's this one here. Maybe I'll put a box around it, actually, since the other thing has a box. That one is this one group that we made. Now, okay, so that number there is the number of groups we can make out of our hundreds place value. And that's why it's over the hundreds, because this stands for 100. All right. And then this three here, well, that's how many hundreds we used in total. So I'm going to do this, yeah, maybe with um, a shading thing. 
So, this three are these three hundreds that we used to group. We grouped three of the hundreds that we had, and well, we of course have one hundred. No, oh, I don't want that. Let me use my pen. One hundred left over. So that there is the remaining hundreds that I have. And of course it needs to be smaller than three, else I could make another group. Okay, so the next thing I did in my long division is I brought down this three. But when I bring down that three, what I'm really doing is I'm taking this hundred, the left, the remaining hundred, and I'm breaking it up into the next place value, tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, tens. So this arrow here, when I bring down that three, what I'm really doing is I'm saying, all right, I'm done with the hundreds. Everything else is going to be tens. So I'm going to look at this as 13 tens. So that's what that is there. When you bring down that 3, you're breaking up your remaining 100, in this case, into the next place value, tens, giving us a total of 13 tens. And then we ask, well, how many groups of 3 can we make out of our tens? Well, we can make... One, two, three, four groups of ten. So we made our four groups of ten here. All right. And then we do four times three is twelve. And that twelve is how many tens we've used. So let me shade that in here. So... These are all of the tens that we've grouped. We've grouped 12 of them. We were able to group 12, and there was one remaining. So this guy that's remaining, that's that one, of course. And then we, of course, we bring down our one. When we bring down our one, we're saying, we're done with the tens. We're going to take that remaining ten and we're going to break it up into ten ones. So that's what's happening here. And then we ask, all right, how many groups can we make? Let's go ahead and group them. We use green, we use blue, let's use red, I guess. So that's one group, two groups, three groups of ones we can make. We grouped in total nine ones. There's the nine ones that we grouped. That's this guy here. And of course, well, how many didn't we group? We didn't group these these two. So we didn't group those two. That's those. So you can see what's going on here. There's only kind of one last note I want to make. Um, I want to talk about the ones, but it's the same for each of this place value. And it's kind of, an, I'll just do it by example, just to say what's happening here. So, one group of three hundreds is the exact same thing as saying that you have 100 groups 
of three ones. Of course, that's the same thing, right? So just in each of the hundreds, you can take a one here. So that's one group. And then just keep doing it for every hundred in that group. So this is saying, and it's the same thing here. So rather than saying, so this is four groups of three tens. This is the same thing as 40 groups of three ones. And this is one, so it's just three groups of three ones. So in total, we have 100 plus 40 plus three groups of three ones, giving us 143 groups of three ones with two left over. So I think it's important, and I think you should go back and re-watch this and ask yourself, you'll see questions like, well, what do each of these numbers mean? What does this one mean? What does that stand for? Okay. What does the 13 stand for after you bring down the three? What is the meaning of these numbers? Remember, the idea behind this course is to learn the why of mathematics in the K-8 to curriculum. So when you do something like long division, I want you to understand what each of these numbers represents. That's the whole idea. So re-watch the video and make notes. I went through each thing here. Make notes yourself about what each number here stands for. You should be able to do that. And there are the type of questions that you will see on assessments in this course. And also they're good questions for you to be able to answer when you're teaching long division. You might get a student that doesn't know um, what's going on with this one, or maybe they make a common mistake and you can explain why their mistake is a mistake if you understand every step and every number in this algorithm. And the other thing is, of course, there's nothing particularly special about just having things up to hundreds. We could have had a number with some thousands or ten thousands or hundred thousands or whatever. Or this didn't have to be a single digit number. It could be a double digit number, whatever. The whole point is, is that you want to make groups of this size and you want to do it place value by place value at a time doing kind of smaller division problems and then looking at your remainders. And once you have your remainder for each place value, then you bring down your next number from your place value. And when you do that, that tells you to break up the remainders from your previous place value into the one that you just brought down. So this hundred, when you bring down the three, this now becomes tens. And this tens, when you bring down the one here, this one ten becomes ten ones. So that's the idea.